I would like to discuss the when and why of potting orchids grown in LECA or any other inorganic media, but mainly LECA is feasible and when it is not feasible, as opposed to repotting, which entails a full-on root ball cleanup. You see, many times I have heard that growing orchids in LECA is the lazy way to grow orchids and, well, I would like to clear a few things up when it comes to that statement or perception, especially after I just finished dealing with this mess. Yes, I recycle my LECA because that is a huge point for me. Reduce the cost of growing orchids to the bare minimum, the bare necessities. The simple bare necessities. Forget about your worries and your strife. But that's Baloo, not the dog the bear. Anyway, you know what I mean, I hope. As in reduce the cost of growing orchids to the bare minimum. And LECA is a huge contributor to achieving that goal. But is growing in LECA really the lazy way of growing orchids? I will give pointers as to when that applies and why, as well as when it doesn't and why. Welcome to the patio. It's good to have you here. Thank you so much for being here. To qualify what I consider people deem as the lazy way of growing orchids is when I hear that all you have to do is unpot the orchid and increase the pot size with the only requirement of filling in the spaces with fresh lecker. I have heard many growers say that and they add the USP, the unique selling point, which is, and you don't even have to disturb the roots of your orchid. Hardly surprising that the growers who grow in organic media have this opinion that those of us growing in LECA are lazy orchid growers because the task of repotting orchids to refresh degrading media can be quite the challenge. Do that every two years or even less when growing in sphagnum moss and well, maybe they have a point. But do they really? Let me just say this. Orchid care is orchid care is orchid care, no matter what your choice of media is. The LECA is just something that the roots can take a hold of, just like bark is. Ideally, orchids should be grown mounted, but here we are, not all of us can do that. So before you follow the guideline of just up-potting your orchids when using LECA, let me clear up when it is feasible and when you can get away with it without losing your orchid, the root system, and when it is not feasible ever. Because if you do not do things the same way when growing in LECA as you would if you are growing in bark, then your orchid roots will struggle. It has nothing to do with the LECA though. It has everything to do with the fact that the orchid roots need oxygen and space. So getting away with the up-potting every time your orchid outgrows its pot is only feasible for orchids that are terrestrial, semi-terrestrial like slipper orchids and cymbidiums, or orchids that have super vigorous root growth examples being and Celias, which is the orchid that I'm dealing with in this footage, or Catacetinae fall into that category as well. The reason up-potting over and over again works well with these orchids is because of their vigorous root growth. The fact that they grow such incredible amounts of roots with every new growth sustains the orchid in the event of root loss when a full-on root ball cleanup is not what you want to deal with. I mean, this network of roots is just beautiful insanity, and it is not done growing it will continue to grow with more new roots coming from all the new growths plus the branching of the older viable roots. This orchid is now being up-potted for the third time. I have never gone in and done a complete cleaning of the root ball that extensively and this has been the case since 2018. As you can see, my orchid is doing great. It has more than eight new growths this season, more on the way even if they don't grow to size because now we are heading into the cold time of year. Still, even those growths that won't mature to size will produce roots of their own. And yes, this is the lazy way of growing orchids with LECA. It's fun, there's not much cleanup to do from the LECA that fell out of the older pot. And trust me, I love repots like this, knowing full well that the orchid will be fine. Other instances when you can get away with being the so-called lazy orchid grower is if you have a seedling or juvenile orchid that has as yet to grow to blooming size and you do not want to disturb the roots if not necessary, but still need to bump up the orchid into a bigger pot to accommodate the orchid in the new or larger pot for another two or three years. Then a simple up pot is also feasible and often you are dealing with a root system that has not filled in the previous pot However, the orchid needs a bigger pot. In those instances, there's no need to go all ninja into the root system for a deep clean. A larger pot will create the climate that the new roots need for the coming years. Simples, job done. I also love me repots like these. <laughs>
but there are the exception to the rule. Remember I said that orchid care is orchid care is orchid care and no matter the media we still have to care for our orchids welfare and the most important network that will help our orchids to stay healthy is to address the root system and remove dead and dying roots as well as allow for any new roots to continue growing into a pot that has space. This allows for gas exchange and makes for a great environment for the new roots to succeed and grow healthily. For the most part, the same rules apply when growing orchids in Lekka as they are suggested for orchids grown in organic media. A repot is necessary every two years, possibly three depending on the orchid because we always have to re-establish the climate in the pot that allows the orchid roots to function as they need to in order to stay healthy. And that also means removing as much lecker as is feasible, as you dare because we don't want to damage too much of an existing viable root system, and that also includes trimming dead roots that do not serve a purpose anymore unless they can assist in anchoring the orchid into the pot. Now please do not think that removing all the lecker is a must in repots like these. On the contrary, that is where we have the grace of lecker not degrading. We can be a little bit more protective of the existing root system and take advantage of the non-degrading media we are using. But make no mistake, we have to do a root ball cleanup in such a way that we are re-establishing the climate in the pot for optimal growth and function of the orchid roots. Same as with organic media. We have to also gauge how many years an orchid can be left undisturbed in the newer, larger pot. Should we have miscalculated and the orchid surprises us and takes off in such a way that we have to intervene sooner than we had anticipated, then that is awesome. And it is exactly what we want. And it is also at that point, after just having done a recent root ball cleanup, that is when we can just do another up pot again because the root ball was dealt with not that long ago. And when I say not that long ago, I refer to approximately 12 months. Now, as mentioned, when growing with Lekka, there is a lot of grace, but I really want to get away from the perception that it is the lazy way of growing orchids. Having that mindset when considering switching from organic media to Lekka is the wrong approach. The workload comes after the repot. That is, if you choose to recycle your Lekka, which, in my opinion, is the whole point of growing in inorganic media, not to have to constantly buy new media. Anyway, do not underestimate the workload after to the repot. You see, sometimes the lecker will fall off easily from the roots, which is great when it comes to processing the batch for storage and reuse. But sometimes the velamen of some orchid roots is so sticky it attaches to the lecker like glue. It is paper thin <laughs> and it is very difficult to remove. And I do make conscious effort to remove as much of the velamen off of lecker beads and as best as possible. However, it can be a doozy, especially when you have a project like this one, which has Cymbidium velamen all attached to the lecker. And Cymbidium velamen is thin just like the velamen of catacetinae roots and well the workload to get a batch of lecker processed from this to this is time consuming and very much a labor of love. I just cannot describe it in any other way. While I like to process my lecker after every repot to start with a clean slate, there are times that processing lecker from cleaning, rinsing, boiling and then sorting, it can take a week because I personally cannot dedicate consecutive hours without interruption to this single batch alone. And of course, this is an exaggerated project, but this is something I want to draw your attention to just in case you think that growing orchids in lecker is the lazy way to do it. But I can assure you that once I pour the processed lecker into the storage container for future use, I have to chuckle <laughs> at the opinion Lekka is for growing orchids the lazy way. I can assure you it is not. <laughs> but those growing in organic media do not have to do all that. They can just throw their old media into the garden or under the hedge. What a lazy way of dealing with the aftermath of a repot. <laughs> just kidding. Kind of, sort of. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> So I hope I could dispel the illusion that Lekka is the lazy way of growing orchids. 
please do not ignore your reap pods because you're under the impression that you do not have to disturb the root system and just constantly up pot. The exceptions I have listed are exceptions. 90% of the time our collections have orchids that demand a reap pot with a full on root ball cleanup every two years, maybe three. So with all that being said, there is no lazy way of growing orchids unless you're blessed to be living in a climate where you can attach your orchids to all the vegetation in your landscape and simply let them do their thing. If we're going to apply the label of lazy way of growing orchids, then that is truly the lazy way of growing orchids, but it's also the best way to grow them. But alas, not all of us are that fortunate. I hope this video was helpful, that it gave you some insight to what it really takes when it comes to growing orchids and lecker. I do not want anyone to be wearing rose-tinted glasses only to be hit with the enormity of the workload and come to the realization that nothing changes when it comes to caring for orchids, even if grown in lecker. If you have any questions, especially when it comes to the exception of just up potting only, please do not hesitate to ask. I would also appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, share the video in support of getting the word out about what we addressed in this video, and thank you so much for all of that. Also, thank you for watching to the end. I get to wish you a wonderful day on the condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye!